great DJA radio station Berlin, mouthpiece of the Nazi regime. To all corners of the globe, this station transmits its messages. Under the direct control of that master schemer, Goebbels, DJA tells always of Germany's triumphs. Sessions are given in every spoken language, commentators selected from traitors and outcasts, whose only qualifications are that they renounce England and speak in the language of the country they have forsaken. Engaged to lie in an attempt to break down the morale of those countries directly or indirectly opposed to the doctrines of Hitlerism. In Nazi Germany, it is a crime to listen to any station other than those prescribed by the government. Australia has no such restrictions. King's Cross, Sydney, wherein are gathered people from every corner of the earth. Here in these great modern blocks of flats live men and women who strive to rebuild their shattered fortunes, to mend broken lives, to forget. But there are others, agents of Germany, Hitler's fifth columnists, thrilling with insane joy as they hear of another city or town blown from the face of the earth. Europe, here once stood happy homes and stately churches, playgrounds and parks where carefree children played. Today, smoldering, burning heaps of ruins, funeral pyres. Another Nazi victim. Tomorrow it may be the mother or the children. Nothing is sacred. Men who strive only to do good meet the same ghastly fate. Hitler's religion is one of hatred. Inside Germany, there is another method. To those who dare to voice a protest against such brutality, or by some unintentional word or action dare to offend, there is the dreaded Gestapo. There is one punishment. Hitler speaks in books, on films, over the air, sometimes boastful, sometimes pleading. Fanatical tirades that tell all who kiss fighting for the removal of an injustice, fighting to free the oppressed. The world listens. Australia is free. Perhaps in the past, too free. Nowhere could this be better illustrated than in Sydney's great domain. It is here that free speech has been allowed to all, where each Sunday thousands gathered to listen and enjoy the varied oratory delivered from a hundred loud-toned voices, or perhaps photograph the ever-changing scene. We had a visit from one who started this craze. On a pleasure cruise, he said, forgetting to mention that it was a pleasure cruise organized by the government of Germany. In the past, there have been others. Even away in the little known interior, amongst the primitive natives, there are townships where agents of Hitler wait and plan for the downfall of a country that has sheltered them and given them security. At Darwin, Australia's northern gateway, for years, sampans, luggers, pearlers, all have made it a port of call, sometimes to land a passenger. Few questions were asked. Cameras were not forbidden. Photographs would be taken. And then the stranger would disappear. Maybe his job completed. Maybe he would travel south to the big cities, there to await further instructions. Government officials day and night are working to stamp out this enemy within. We as loyal citizens must also do our part. We can assist to stifle this cankerous evil. Careless talk can be of the most expensive. Idle gossip has lost nations. A rumor repeated can cost a thousand lives. Fred left yesterday could be translated to mean 5,000 troops have left these shores. Somewhere, a secret rendezvous. Two people meet. A message changes hands. A phone number is dialed. A coded message to be sent over some hidden radio transmitter. Sets capable of sending messages on a wavelength that cannot be picked up on any normal receiver. At Nazi headquarters, they are decoded. Future moves are planned, and a horrified world wonders how they knew. This can and has happened. A lighter touch without losing its vital message. Throughout the Commonwealth, these posters create a laugh. But underneath the humor, there is strong, forceful warning. Silence. Careful what you say. 
Most of us speak only when we have a listener. That someone could be an enemy. It's safer not to repeat that rumor. Rumors, like weeds, can spread rapidly. Canberra, the capital city, where new laws are made, new plans formulated to carry on the fight to its successful conclusion. of Australia's manhood, trained, fit, and willing to face any odds. Men from every walk of life have answered the call. Men welded together into a powerful fighting force, ready and waiting for any who dare threaten the one great cause, the cause of liberty and freedom. Our Navy too is ready, ever on the alert, so that you and yours may be free from that darkening terrorism that threatens the entire civilized world. In return for freedom and safety under the British flag, every alien is required to satisfy the authorities of his bona fides. He must tell of his plans and propose movements. The Commonwealth must be sure. This country is at war. War as real as that in Europe. With Mussolini's entry on the side of Hitlerism, the police departments throughout the country made lightning-like raids. Within a few hours, alien-owned shops were closed. The police did a great job of work. War goes on. Day and night, that sickly, persuasive propaganda can be heard from enemy countries. Australia still listens, but is not persuaded. Australia has seen and heard how the oppressed are freed, freed by death. Death showered upon them from the skies as great roaring bombers carry on their grisly work of destruction. The fight will go on, on until Nazism... Australia Today.